Uh, welcome to the course on cloud computing. Today uh, we will uh, have our first uh, lecture. So, as, as you might have seen the broad overview of the course. So, in this particular series of lectures, we will try to uh, give an uh, a overall picture of what cloud computing is and uh, what are its major components and uh, what are the recent trends and at the end maybe what are the different type of uh, uh, research opportunities or this trends of uh, future trends in the cloud computing. Right? So, so, before going to the details of cloud computing, we will try to have a quick overview of course and the basic paradigm of computing. Now, if you look at that as defined by ACM computing curricula in 2005 as they defined computing, it is a uh, general way we can uh, define computing to mean uh, as a mean to solve any goal oriented activity. Right? So, that means, it, it can be it can include starting from hardware software system for a wide range of purposes and also uh, making computing systems intelligent using communications, finding gathering informations from uh, relevant to any particular purpose and so on. So, if you look at it has anything where some sort of a computing is needed, it falls under the computing paradigm. So, this, this gives us a broad spectrum of thing not only in terms of resources, also in terms of the terms or category or level of people who can who are going to use it. So, starting from a high end researcher or a professional to a student to even to a housewife or a citizen in general look want to use it for its benefit or something which serves particular purpose. Okay. Before uh, going to other uh, overview of this computing, I will I will just try to reiterate the type of uh, course or type of things we will like to cover. So, initial lectures we will have a more uh, things most likely today and maybe uh, something on the next day that introduction to cloud computing which has gives a overview what that NIST model says, what are the typical properties characteristics advantage and disadvantages of cloud computing or role of open standard. So, how whether there is a standardization need or things. Then we will look at more as a cloud computing architecture like what is the typical computing cloud computing stack uh, moving towards a service oriented architecture. So, what sort of service models are available in cloud like typically infrastructure as a service, platform as a service or software as a service or anything as a service later we will see that anything as a service whether we can realize. What are the different deployment models right in, in case of a cloud how when I want to deploy whether it is in a what will be the different deployment models of a cloud. Then one of the another major aspect of cloud is the service management like, like as, as we uh, whenever we try to uh, purchase any service or whenever I want to leverage any service there is a need of service management like like from the say consumer end I, I would like to have what is the guarantee of minimal services. Uh, from the provider end the uh, cloud provider or cloud service provider CSP want to see that may be the profit or may be, uh, may be that how this guarantee what are the resource requirement at the back end to serve so much computer. So, from the if you look at the provider consumer for any type of services not only cloud services any type of services in our day to day life we require some sort of a agreement between the service provider and the consumer what in what we say something called service level agreement like I want to say that my availability will be 100 percent or near 100 percent based on my thing like I say when a exam is going on I want to have redundant services so that the availability of the resources is 100 percent or very near to 100 percent. Whereas, when my practice session is going on the requirement of availability may come down to 90 percent. Now, based on the availability the resource pooling or resource management will be done by the at the provider end and the provider will charge based on the type of type of his resources type of availability etcetera. Then there are issues of downtime what will be there are issues of quality of services there are several several other issues that we will try to discuss under the paradigm of uh, service level agreements and other things. There is one other another important person uh, another important aspects is cloudonomics or economy of using cloud computing. 
it may not be whether it is always good that if I use cloud it will be beneficial whether it is true like it is as um, as we see like suppose if you want to commute to 20 kilometer per day for your office or work then it may be economical to purchase a car right but if you are commuting say even 50 kilometer or 100 kilometer once in a month it may not be economical uh, uh, than purchasing a car right it may be more economical than hiring a car right similarly when i should hire when i should purchase whether there is a relationship whether there is an economic model behind it or what if at all how to how do, how do i from my uh, say organizational point of view maybe from a particular say event point of view whether i can see that whether purchasing or hiring a resources or uh, is economical or what is the what is the economic model of the things so that type of things economics in cloud or economy in cloud we have to see another aspect is the resource management like this is more in the service provider end right or cloud service provider how these resources will be managed right like i uh, so what i what i see that i have i need to serve so many people so what sort of resources i need to manage at the things this is true for anything like if i say if i have a stationary shop or book which uh, takes care of stationaries related, uh, related to say academic uh, things like i say say uh, notebooks pen and etc etc so how much i need to stock or it depends on how much uh, maybe my cell projection etc or uh, so i do not have some a situation when i am starving for my store or i should not have a situation when i am say my shop is full and i need to keep something outside the shop type of things right so it is i should not have a overloading or all so i have a proper resource management so it is very tricky when we have a computing as a resource uh, or, or when i provide computing as a resource then i have to manage several type of resources like typically if i look at a, in a typical computing system forget about cloud or anything so what are the things uh, we are basically looking for maybe one maybe the processor or the cpu popularly or maybe uh, or one maybe the your uh, working memory or popularly the ram or hard disk and maybe network connectivity and there are other several other resources which are uh, there right so how much resources i need to maintain manage etc right so any resources has a uh, inherent costing into the things so if i need to manage huge volume of resources without utilization then i have to incur what we say more cost on the resources or uh, than in maintaining the things so this appropriate or optimally management of resources is a serious challenge and they are here we would like to see that what are the different type of resource management issues in this uh, particular uh, cloud computing thing. So, other aspects of uh, this cloud computing one is the data management right. So, data is a very tricky thing right uh, we look, look to look at this how this data will be stored managed scalability and cloud services over this uh, data services over that if it is a not only data if it is a databases and data stores so there there is a separate type of looking at the data things in the cloud and if it is a large scale data processing then i need to look at the uh, how this data management will be there so our conventional way of approaching normal data or database management systems whether it is still still good for cloud or whenever i want to give as data storage or type of services so what type of things i need to do for the things like like we are popularly using different type of storage as a service uh, stuffs and uh, in our day to day life like one of the popular thing may be the dropbox so how things at the background need to be managed so it is not like that i you need to build a data services uh, all the qualities but at least looking at that what are the architecture and what are the issues in data management type of things another major aspects of uh, cloud is security right so your data is in some other place your computing in in some other others domain so what will be the different type of security aspects so at it has uh, like what will be the security which service a infrastructure as a thing 
or what are uh, data related or storage related security because data is a important aspects of our all things like what uh, what many people say that uh, you can uh, regenerate a or reinstall an application but you cannot reinstall your data like i write a report of 100 or 10 pages and it gets system get crashed and then the data is lost along with the application i can re reinstall the os i can reinstall the word processing tool but i can reinstalling the data is uh, not possible that particular report is not possible if not you have a recovery mechanism etc right whenever i have on my personal systems like it may be personal computing desktop or in a laptop or wherever then it is my responsibility to take backups or I have redundancy things in the things. But whenever I store the data into the others place then one is one is how things are saved and type of things in, uh, in case of loss or another typical thing comes up whether my data is being accessed or overwritten read by somebody else right. So, that means whether this what is the security of this particular data. There are issues of identity and access management. So, this is this is another important aspects where particular identity and access management of the collaborating collaborating parties need to be there. There are issues of access control, trust, reputation, risk. So, there are several issues like how, how access control will be there, whether it is a our standard access control mechanisms, whether role based access control mechanisms or whatever things we can we work on on the security. How much trust on having? I have a cloud service provider whether I trust service provider 1 more than the service provider 2 or uh, whether it is how to calculate a particular uh, service provider. So, there are issues of the reputation I want to look at a reputation there are issues of risk of losing data losing application losing your because uh, your own customers like you are purchasing cloud to serve somebody right. So, you can you may in turn things. So, this trust reputation risk goes somewhere what we say three nodes of a triangle. So, they are interlinked have a in for any uh, systems they have a uh, lot of what we say a lot of influence on working of the whole systems right. So, I need to assure that uh, how it is assured in the in cloud computing paradigm we would have to see. Then we will try to look at some of case studies. Uh, or uh, or some some uh, what we say demo type of things on open source com and commercial cloud may be some cloud simulator. So, there are uh, various commercial cloud in things uh, in the uh, in the market. So, we will try to see that what are the uh, basic uh, property or how they work etcetera. Then there are open source cloud. So, we are trying to see that uh, how a open source things are there we when we will uh, if uh, if time permits we will try to see that. Uh, what are the different step of installing a open source cloud and there are a few cloud simulators also. So, we like to if it is time permits we will like to see the simulator and at the end of the things as as one of our uh, major uh, motivation of this academic world to take things in a in future right we want to see that uh, something more in the future. So, we will try to look at the recent trend in cloud computing. So, those who are interested in research or even some of projects in PG level, UG level. So, they can they can have a pointers that what are the different aspects of sentence in cloud computing. There are there are people are talking about fog computing and other different technologies. So, we like to see that what are the different aspects of those things. So, this is broadly the overall uh, code structure we will try to give a proper weightage based on the importance of the course will and will give more details as and when we will we'll basically going through those lectures right. So, with this we will try we will we'll have a quick overview of what are the different computing trend which which actually made this cloud computing a reality. So, it is it is uh, not that it is from the day one something was there. So, it as we say that all all invention or all any type of development is primarily come up with uh, some necessity or requirement of the of the what we say community scientific community or even uh, general citizen at large. So, that drives that what thing with that there one of the things there are definitely blue sky researches 
where we, we it is driven by that in own things, but we would like to see that so much computing is already was in place or is in place. So, why still it has the importance whether it is a totally new baby or new stuff or it is a amalgamation or evolved through the things right. So, what we see it is or in different literatures or even when in if you look at the cloud computing as a whole, it is not a, a suddenly a new stuff which came into the play. It has a evolved and it has a different other development which is already in place which has uh, basically helped in uh, bringing this into uh, play. So, uh, if we look at that different type of computing paradigm which are uh, or which were there for a long time and still uh, um, still in a big uh, in, it is there in a big way. So, one first of all the mother of the things all those things is known as the distributed or people say that it is a distributed computing right. So, distributed computing then we have different other computing it is not that uh, it came uh, in the sequence like one after another, but it is more of the these are the different aspects what we look at the things. So, it is a distributed computing we have grid computing, we have cluster computing, we have utility computing and we are talking about cloud computing. Now, if we uh, uh, see that uh, this different development where different needs everybody has advantages, some disadvantages and they helped in making some other things in a feasible way. So, we will go quickly uh, because these are some of the things already known to you and are available in the literature, but just to have that why what is the uh, how it came up this cloud computing it may be things. So, if you look at distributed computing, so, uh, so we started with or still we are we work with centralized computing like primarily in previous days we used to use mainframe where different terminals are there. So, jobs are submitted to the mainframe that gets executed and uh, being used by the or being viewed by the user. So, primarily it is a something which is has a uh, logically single processing thing right. So, or what we say some sort of a uniprocessor uh, computing or centralized computing type of things. Now, also in different places is there it is not like that we need to throw out the things there is a particular necessity of the things and uh, these are still useful in several places and being used at several uh, areas. So, the other thing uh, which uh, evolved is the distributed computing we where you have different system uh, distributed uh, over a uh, particular geographical space. Uh, typically, it may vary from a lab type of scenario to a scenario where you have the uh, large geographical boundaries also again or depends on the uh, type of requirements are there right. And one important aspects came up is that network link availability of seamless network connectivity during uh, between this collaborating systems like they are what we say different uh, different network systems right. So, so, it is basically a field of computing science that studies distributed systems it was there for a long time use of distributed system to solve computational processes right. There are different other type of def other definitions which come up if you look at the internet several definitions come up. So, there are several it is one says that there are several autonomous computational entities each of has its own local memory. So, it is separate autonomous independent computing entities having their own local memories. The entities communicate, communicate with each other by message passing over a backbone compute communication network right. So, that is one thing if we look at the operating system point of or uh, way of the concept the processor communicates with each other through various communication lines say high speed buses or even telephone lines where the things each processor has its own local memory right. So, there are several type of example people put different things in the distributed com computing paradigm uh, starting from over internet networking is a distributed system uh, or this ATMs, bank machines, different uh, branches of the banks or even different uh, collaborating and doing uh, executing different functions that can be a things. 
intranet or work groups within the internet may be a distributed system. Computing landscape will soon consist of ubiquitous network connected devices right? uh, or rather not will be it is already we have ubiquitous uh, network connected devices. So, or what we say it is something ad hoc type of establishment which comes and type of things and these days we see different type of uh, networks which are which form as ad hoc network they are different volatile like one example is vehicular ad hoc networks right like vehicles. Uh, smart vehicles with their own uh, onboard units communication path once they come together they form a ad hoc network and it 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 executes different type of function like maybe safety related things maybe internet entertainment uh, entertainment uh, related or infotainment related type of things and different type of stuff are there so if you look at the broad type of computers in a distributed system so they are uh, primarily what we say workstation, uh, server systems and personal uh, assistance devices like it may. So, workstation is computers which are in the end user to perform computing, server systems which works on a uh, which gives some provide some services per se. So, computers which provide resources and services right there can be personal assistant devices like hand handle computers connected to systems where wireless communication network it can be any type of things like any type of communication paradigms which helps in communicating with the things. So, these are the different uh, what we say typical end nodes in a distributed systems right. There can be other type of uh, nodes also like uh, I uh, which has more network capabilities network processing type of things etcetera, but this what we can say broadly these are the typical nodes in a uh, in a typical distributed system. So, if we look at the why such of things some common properties or common advantages or what we say uh, benefits of distributed system one is fault tolerant like you have uh, one or more uh, means several systems are working. So, uh, even with some uh, node failures it works faithfully right or maybe at a lower uh, lower performance, but it is uh, it is not totally out of uh, service right had it been a centralized system. So, if down the whole thing is down, but you get to do something in a lower thing. So, uh, it also to make it fault tolerant there are different mechanisms etcetera was uh, many of you may be knowing and to make the things. So, there are other things that each know another uh, typical aspect is each node play its partial role right. So, each node in the distributed system plays its partial role there is another aspects of or a property of resource sharing they share resources among themselves. There is a load sharing. So, what is not only resource sharing that computing resource sharing, but also load sharing like if I if it is a load or what we say that load balancing amount the things can be realized easy to expand. So, usually systems may be like that that uh, we can easy to expand like like I can have uh, I can add uh, distributed system a more system into the network as and when as and when I have it or use it. Performance is a issue. So, parallel computing can be considered as a subset of a distributed systems where I can have higher performance and need to be monitored. So, what will uh, uh, so another aspect of distributed system is that why why we require may be the nature of application demands it may be the uh, different uh, performance like I have computing intensive data intensive type of uh, things and in some of the cases I require a robustness into the system that should be no single point failure. I, I do not want any single point failure I may be doing a mission critical things which may not be very computing instant, uh, intensive or memory intensive, but I, I cannot afford to do any failure on the system right. So, in this several cases there is a need of the things or in other sense this this need primarily one of the primary uh, what we say motivation of developing or development of this distributed systems. So, we will we'll, uh, break for now and we will continue our discussion in the subsequent in the next lecture. Thank you.